Hey everyone, welcome to the next five minutes or less video. We're going to talk about mixtures in chemistry today. So here we go. There are main differences between a compound and a mixture. As you can see, a mixture has all the parts mixed together, but they're not fused together in any way. These ones look like they're stuck together because a compound creates a new substance, and the new substances have totally different characteristics than the original parts. In a mixture, we're just mixing different substances together, but they're keeping their same characteristics. So the key thing about a mixture is they are not bonded together in any way. So some examples is like oatmeal and raisins. The raisins don't turn into oatmeal when you mix them together or vice versa. They keep their same properties. They're just in a pile together essentially. Now there's two different types of mixtures. There's what we call a heterogeneous mixture, which means that the parts are visible and they're unevenly distributed. So you could see they're like randomly mixed together essentially, uh, like iron and sand or like trail mix. And then you got a homogeneous mixture, which means you cannot see the different parts and they're evenly stirred up together. So you can't see anything in this coffee, but if there's sugar in it, you might not be able to see it and you stir it evenly. All right, so a homogeneous mixture can also be called a solution. That's just another name for it. And in a solution, there is a solute and a solvent. The solvent is the main liquid. It's the thing that does the dissolving. And the solute is the thing that dissolves or whatever you're stirring in. So like the sugar would be the solute to your coffee, which is the solvent. Now there's seven different ways that we learn to separate a mixture. The first one is filtering. So this is like a coffee filter. It will keep the solid particles out in the paper and liquid will pass through it. Sorting is when you just separate them by hand. You can then use a sieve or a strainer to get the smaller particles to pass through, but it catches the bigger particles like straining your pasta. You can take a magnet and pull out metallic or magnetic materials out of another mixture. We can wait for it to settle. If they're different densities, it'll just separate out naturally. We can boil or evaporate. So just if we have like salt water, you can boil the water out and then it just leaves the salt behind. And finally, you can distill. So this is pretty cool. You take the steam of the water when you evaporate it and it goes into an ice chamber and then that chamber then recools the gas down into a liquid so you can save your water. So if you have salt water, you can have your salt left here and then your water will end up liquefying on the other side. Now there's also three types of solutions. Depending on how much solute you dissolve, it's going to be different. So let's just do a chocolate milk, for example. The milk is the solvent and the solute is the syrup or whatever you're gonna use. Now, if I only put a little syrup in the milk, that means that I can add, add more still. So since it still has room, we call that unsaturated. There's still room for more solute to be added. If I put enough for it to be completely full, that would be saturated. Saturated means it's completely full of the solute. Now, if I add more than it can actually hold, it'll start to overflow and we call that supersaturated. That's if you have like it piling up on the bottom or something like that. Now, you can actually get that syrup to dissolve if you heat the liquid. Heating the liquid allows the particles to spread out here, as you can see, which will allow more room in between the particles to add more solute. So if you want to stir in more syrup, you can actually heat the milk, which will create more room, and then you'll be able to put more syrup in. All right, well, thanks for joining me. That was mixtures in five minutes or less. Good luck, and I'll see you on the next one.